What if you could be a part of something that spiritually feeds you, that helps you to access the highest and best part of you, that thrills for you when you succeed and that bears witness to you when you're in pain or, or going through some kind of heartbreak? What if this thing was something that always is supporting and uplifting you, that gives you the help that you need and gives you opportunities to contribute, to reciprocate, to use your gifts and talents, all the while accepting you and loving you exactly as you are? What if this thing was something that was helping you co-create the kind of world that you want to live in? I bet you can guess what it is spiritual community. I want to be in it, and I bet you do too. So we count ourselves in, most of us who are tuning in, I imagine, to this ideal of spiritual community. And we at Unity of Walnut Creek really hold the possibility for what that can be, for all the things I mentioned, and so much more. So this is a picture of us at our 70th anniversary. And so you get a sense of who we are if you're new to Unity of Walnut Creek, and maybe even a little sense of the vibrancy of who we are on this beautiful summer day celebrating 70 years just a couple years ago. And so I, I just want to honor and give thanks for this community also personally. Uh, so it's been now three years, over three years, that Brenly and I have been here at this community. And just before this, we lived in Santa Inez, California, on a 6,000 acre property that was owned by the University of California. And it was a, a reserve specifically for studying nature. And there were only three human beings, including the two of us that lived on all this land and a whole lot of wildlife. So it was exciting to be there and it was satisfying in some ways, but man, was I longing for spiritual community. And so that's really what drew me to this place, to this wonderful, inclusive and loving community. And I am so grateful to be a part of it. And I know so many of you are too, because I hear what you say about being a part of spiritual community and what this particular community has meant to you. So, you know, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore really aptly named our movement. In a meditation, he received the word unity as they were beginning to gather people together in the early stages, invite people to join together in consciousness at a certain time and pray together. They were starting to put out publications, and, and he just one day in meditation said, this is it, this is the name of our movement. It, the Spirit has given it to me, it's unity. And it's so aptly named because it's about union with spirit and it's about connection and, and union with one another. Of course, it's embedded in the word community, common unity. That's basically the sense of, of what it's about. So, you know, we are, of course, part then of a larger community that is unity and an even larger community that is new thought and so on. You know how that goes. It's like Russian dolls nestled within one another, right? We just keep expanding out and then coming back in when we see all the different ways we touch community and are a part of community. My fr friend, Reverend Tandi from South Africa, was the first one who introduced me to the term Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a Zulu word, and it means I am because you are, and you are because I am. It comes from a maxim from the Zulu language that essentially says that a person is a person through other persons. In other, way, in other words, we cannot ever be separated from the whole. Uh, this community idea is integral to who we are. Community, of course, is imperative in our lives, and some of us come to that understanding later than others. It is our support system, it is our mirror, it can be our sense of sanity a sense of being witnessed and heard and, and reflected back to and feel a sense of, of a comradeship, a sense of belonging, of course. Unity, I've heard many people say, is their family. And so it's really understanding that right now it could be pretty heartbreaking to not be with your family in a physical way. But let's take heart knowing that we cannot ever be separated in spirit or in heart 
or in soul. We are all part of this one collective soul. And so we have all these ways to connect as you are connecting right now with your community online. And there are many other ways to connect online. So one of the things that we can do is, is to become aware of who in our community wants to connect but needs some help. And so if you know somebody who needs some help, please do reach out to our staff and we'll do our best to help them get connected in, uh, in terms of technology. When we discover a community, when we come into a community, sometimes it's already established, so that feeling of newness can be a little uncomfortable. And I imagine for those of you who are new to our community, who are tuning in, and you haven't yet really met folks, I want to encourage you, just log on to the virtual patio after this and maybe meet somebody new. Um, or even if you just want to expand those you know and you're fairly new to Unity. So however that is, though, when we come into a community that's already established, there is also a sense of fluidity to the community. So we bring our essence, we bring our gifts, we bring a sense of, of something else to the table. And by doing so, the community, although its foundation doesn't really shift, who it is and what it is shifts. That soul that I mentioned, that collective soul, has an ever-expanding nature to it, just like our individual souls do. So we contribute to that when we enter into a community, and we, of course, hopefully receive much by doing so. Mark Nepo, remember the book we studied last year in the fall, More Together Than Alone? He says that he pulls a, a couple of things together from some studies that I think really accentuates the power of community, both from the sense of heart and mind. In terms of heart, he says, two living heart cells taken from different people and put into a Petri dish will over time find a, a third common heartbeat. Isn't that incredible? So these two little cells that have distinct heartbeats will over time come up with a third common heartbeat. The power of the heart to harmonize cannot be understated. And it's the same with the brain. When we meditate together as we just did, there is a power from studies that says that when people meditate together, their brain waves actually harmonize with one another. And when a newcomer joins the group, the newcomer's brain begins to harmonize with the new group. Pretty incredible, right? All the stuff that's going on invisibly in community that we don't even see is just as potent right now, even when we're just connecting online, or so it seems that's where our physical presence shows up. But so much more is going on with all the connections that we have spiritually, at, at the heart level, the soul level, and the level of mind and consciousness. So when we come together, there is an assimilation, a kind of weaving that makes us even more beautiful, even more colorful, even stronger together, like a, a literal weave would. In the children's book, Many Hands, uh, Penas, uh, uh, Penobscot, excuse me, Indian story by Angela Perot, she talks about the, this, um, the main character is 10-year-old Lily. And Lily it has this dream that comes where her grandmother visits her in a dream. And she gets inspired after that dream to weave a beautiful basket to really master the art of basket weaving. And so she works on this basket and she weaves this really beautiful basket and she can't wait to take it to the village and show it off. And when she brings it to the village, Nobody shows any, any impress, like, that they're really impressed with her work, with what she's created. They say, many hands create the basket, and then they just go back to their work. And Lily's like, oh my gosh, but, well, fine, but didn't my hands create this basket? Why am I not getting any credit for this? And she keeps taking it to different people and gets the same response. So what is the moral of this lesson, of course, is the power of community that even though there may be an individual contribution, there are many individual contributions, that plants and animals contributed to the natural resources that were a part of this basket, that many individuals helped prepare the materials in various ways. And so it's not one individual act alone. We don't act to get individual acknowledgement. We act to make the greater stronger, to make something that is worthwhile for the whole. 
And that's what the tribe was teaching Lily. A lot of us haven't quite learned that lesson yet, right? Because we live in a culture, a Western European patriarchal culture that really values individuality. And while there are many benefits to individuality that we continue to see the gifts of that, it's also a big part of, of our demise. <laughs> it's a big part of what's contributing to our problems is this idea that the individual is somehow more important than the community. And it, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. And I think we're seeing that in so many ways now, that community, collaboration, teamwork is how we solve our problems. We need everyone at the table. We need all the diversity that life has to offer us. So it is through that idea that, and, and we can hold out hope and, and offer hope to even the most radical loner will benefit as they move toward community and have the courage to move toward community because for a radical loner, that might take some courage. There are tribes in West Africa, uh, Sabon Fusume talks about this idea that um, it is actually in community that the people are completely themselves because the community allows them and honors their own individuality. So it's not a loss of identity, but an actual uh, 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 lifting up of, of those individual identities, but as taken as a whole. Take, it, it always comes back to what is the greater good, what, what is best for the tribe, what is best for the community, what is the community able to create together. So while spiritual community is built on this premise of oneness, earthy reality shows us something different, right? There's diversity, there's all these various perspectives and backgrounds and variety of life and all the ways that life looks in its many forms. And it's a beautiful thing, this earthy reality. But to remember that underpinning of oneness is a part of, of what's key for us, I think, as we move forward together in this time. Community also means um, it has a root of common. And so communication is also one of the words that comes from this. Common understanding is what communication is about. Communication is one of the key ways that in community we, we connect, right? And we learn and we come to understand and we co-create together. In Wagner, South Dakota, they've been in a process of this. There's two distinct communities there. There's a Native American population and a white population. And those two populations have lived in a really segregated way for a long time. In 2008, they started to have some concerted dialogues. They started to say, let's come together. We need to begin to understand each other and help each other and, and become one community. It's not that big of a town. And so they did come together, and it was by coming together and communicating that sense of, with the idea of common understanding, to come to a common understanding, that they were able to co-create some things that really make the community more effective in serving all of its citizens. Here's just a few of the things that came out of those initial dialogues. They started a community garden. So as a, as a community creating that garden, you can imagine how that brought people together. And it's always such a joy. I mean, I have so much joy when I go to our garden and get a cucumber or, uh, or some tomatoes and then go make a salad. I mean, I just, Brenly can attest, I just think it's the coolest thing that we can grow our own food. I mean, I guess because I didn't, I grew up more of a city girl. So it's really wonderful um, to be able to to share in the communion with the earth in that way and with each other in that way. So the power of a community garden is really a beautiful thing. I don't know if you know, we have a garden at the back of Unity. Uh, we do have a community garden. We've only had a few people tending to it, but once we're back in person, the children will be able to uh, harvest some of those things and cook and do some other community things we had planned for our summer camp this year. So it's, it's a really beautiful thing. So, so in Wagner, they had this community garden, but then that led to a farmer's market, and then that led to having food stamps at the far, farmer's market that could be automated and you could use them easily so people that didn't have a lot of means could have fresh food. 
They also found that um, that as they cleaned up, that, that their community needed to be cleaned up. So they established cleanup days. And so side by side, they cleaned up each other's trash. And afterwards, they would have a meal together and enjoy music together. Another area that was a problem was the, the Native American children feared actually going to school because they didn't feel like they had a sense of belonging there. And since there's been a realization around that, the children have, have been encouraged to come together and now they're playing sports together and they're forging friendships and those kids are, are not communicating as much reticence to go to school. And now even the school curriculum is inclusive and in having Native American symbolism and ceremonies there. They say the next, uh, the next beacon in their community, the next step, the next action plan is to come together around housing. And so they're bringing that to the city council. Now, is this community perfect? No, they say, absolutely not. There's a long way to go to reach their vision. But every day they see a little bit more movement toward this idea of two separate parts of, of a whole community coming together and the power in that. So all of us can find these easily, these places where we have separated and segregated and where there is power in coming together. It's such a privilege in community to be able to bear witness to each other and to have ourselves witnessed in our growth, in our evolution, in the ways that we change over time and to be supported in that, to be supported when we make mistakes, to make it okay to do that. That's all part of what a healthy community does for each other. And it's always my, my greatest hope and affirmation that that's what you experience at Unity of Walnut Creek. So in class this week, and Zula gave me permission to share this, she was, um, Zula, as a person of color, shared how much she appreciated having this white fragility study group and to be a part of it and to be witnessing as people, uh, you know, move through their, uh, their understanding. I think she's really amazing and patient to be coming into this conversation. Um, but for her, she says that it's, it's taking, she said to be here is, is causing me, is going to cause me to lose a lot of weight. Not just to be there, but to know that we're doing this. That the white folks in our congregation are really trying to learn and educate ourselves. And she said it's like, you know, like a weight being lifted off of her shoulders, essentially, when she said, I, I will lose a lot of weight from this process, both in our community and also in the wider community, as more and more are awakening all around our world and our community. Look at what that does, lightens the load for our brothers and sisters of color. That alone is worth it. That alone is worth your time and attention and energy to get educated and to share with one another. Isn't that a beautiful blessing that we can lift a weight off of our friends in this community that identify as people of color? We help each other in community. You know, we reciprocate. So Zula was also contributing to our understanding in our small group in a way with, from a lens that none of us could see. And so it's that kind of reciprocation of giving and receiving and helping each other that's so key to community. A bunch of New Thought artists got together and, and created this beautiful video about helping each other through in these times. Let's listen and watch. Day by 
That was beautiful. It was fun, too, to just travel around all these different New Thought artists' homes and, uh, and hear that same message that all we can do is, is be there for each other. And that's exactly what we are doing as a community. So during these times, during this pandemic, one of the things that we all know to do is to wear a mask, remain six foot dis distance whenever possible, if we are interacting to be outdoors versus indoors as much as possible, you know, to take these kinds of precautions to take care of one another. I think that's one of the things that's really moving about the whole idea about the mask is that we wear it to protect the other people. And um, I know some people are getting into skirmishes around it. And, um, you know, we just bless folks that are having a hard time with that and move on. And we do our part to contribute to the community. That's the best we can do is to keep, keep our prayer life going, to keep that foundation and to do our part. And so thank you all for doing that. Um, you know, at this time, too, there's some new opportunities. Well, they're not new, but I think they're going to merge as, as we are, it looks like, going to be home longer and away from one another a little bit longer. So, um, so as schools don't come back together, we have families who, have, who are working and who also have children at home. And so whether it's in our, our own little unity of Walnut Creek community, um, but or uh, the bigger, wider community around us, there may be families that could use some help, uh, some you know that maybe need some adult help with with school or some technical help, some equipment help. There also may be within our community or our wider community elders who could use some help with technology, with either equipment or getting set up so that they can join us for online services and online classes. So. There, there's no shortage of opportunities for us here to help one another through. And so let's look for them 
and let's let's reach out. We are co-creating together, you know, and, and in these two really significant ways, both through this pandemic that is teaching us about the power of community and also through the civil rights movement around racial equality that is teaching us about the power of community. So many of us are, are you know, right now, on a journey of understanding, right? A journey of self-education and education together around racial equality. We're also speaking up and standing up and, and getting out there and you know doing what it is that we can do to make change. And so you don't have to, again, look very far to uh, cause yourself to act in maybe a way that you haven't acted before. Maybe you get involved with some of the city government, city council meetings, and, and pushing some agendas there that help really serve our whole population. I know I've been involved with a lot, a lot more conversations with city government than I ever have before, and it's a new territory, and that's all right. I'm not going to do everything the right way or the most effective way, but we keep learning and trying together and following our hearts to act in the ways that we feel compelled to do so. One person um, sent out this, Veronica sent this to me through uh, next, the Nextdoor app, that somebody had uh, noticed in their contract for their homeowners association that the really horrid racist language and exclusionary language that was in there, and it's still in some of these contracts, it's, it's illegal, but they're still in there, they're antiquated contracts. So if you are part of a homeowners association or a cooperative housing, take a look at the contract and make sure it doesn't have that kind of language in it. You can take actions to, um, to get that eradicated from those contracts. Who wants to sign that kind of thing and agree to that? We will not agree anymore as we awaken, as we become aware. You know, right here within our own community, you can get involved. Edie Nelson, who's a part of our community, her grandson was shot and killed by police over a year ago. The family is still awaiting justice here in Walnut Creek. Get involved in justiceformileshall.org if that is something that's knocking on the door of your heart. You know, in 1963, the March on Washington, D.C. During that time, the civil rights icon, John Lewis, said that something that's very relevant for us today. He said, I appeal to all of you to get, to get into the great revolution that is sweeping the nation. Get in and stay in the streets of every city, every village, and every hamlet of this nation until true freedom rings until the revolution of 1776 is complete. Now, you may not feel guided to be in the streets at this time because of the pandemic or your own reasons, but there are many opportunities to be a part of these conversations online as well. So look, ask, knock, the door will be opened. It's a good time for spiritual community to be supported and to contribute perhaps in ways that you might not have dared alone. So maybe you are looking to deepen your community or maybe you are looking to find community or to expand within a community your contributions and your engagement and participation. So let's go to that scripture, ask, and it will be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. And so if we ask, we are asking Spirit, help me to find what it is that I am seeking. Whatever that is that you are, are seeking, ask for help. Ask for guidance. Ask for what it is that you need to find your way to what will really serve you and allow you to serve at your highest and best. Ask for help within the communities that you're in and ask, how can I contribute to the community? How can I be in this reciprocal relationship? Seek whatever it is that you're seeking and ye shall find. That's the promise. So whatever it is that is knocking on the, the door of your heart as a desire, know that as you, as you engage that, you will find it as a promise in this beautiful scripture. Knock on the door of community. Knock on the door of opportunity. Knock on the door of possibility and potentiality. And the door will be opened, we're told. So take those actions, step in and step up, and it will allow us then to build the kind of world we want, the kind of neighborhood we want, the kind of spiritual community we want. 
This scripture is a guideline for a living prayer. Ask and seek and knock. Ask and you will be given to you. Seek and you will find yourself. (laughs) And knock and you yourself will be opened further. So we need each other, right? That's clear, isn't it? (laughs) That as community, we need each other, and we as individuals need community. So let's really engage in that. Our world is like, if we think about our world as one human family, as we think about the world as a circle of life that includes all forms of life, if we think of the world as a spiritual community, when we cast it in that se- sense of, of wholeness and oneness, it really helps us to propel ourselves forward. So when we think of of um, the, the world as a circle of life, of all life, then it causes us not to use and abuse nature for our own ends so much. You know, when we think of our, ourselves as one human family, it causes us not to have this distinct us and them, but to blur those lines and realize that we are all brothers and sisters together. We are all uh, one of many gender expressions. And then when we also think of ourselves as one spiritual community, then we know that spirit, we can rely on spirit, we can rely on the divinity within and without to help us along the way to find the answers that we need to move ahead, to co-create, to build, to come together as unity and community. So that's my greatest hope, that we do all these things as this new extraordinary emerges. You know, back at the beginning days of this pandemic, we talked about this is some kind of awakening. Something is happening here. There's something stirring here. There's something really important in this pandemic, in this this virus that is one of our ancestors, as Chief, Chief Philip Scott taught us. And, and so it's, it's this knowing now and now, now as we see the racial um, issues that have come to the fore for so many, that, that this time is offering us incredible opportunities to awaken. And we must do it together. There's not really any other way to work effectively. So it's in our ancestral bones, you know, that community is imperative. I think we know that somewhere deep inside of us, we know that. And even if we've been acting alone, we can begin to feel that pull of the importance of our togetherness, the power of our togetherness. I know I am extremely grateful for this community. So thank you all for welcoming me into this community, for allowing me to serve as your minister. It is such a deep blessing. And so let's know the power in our own hearts of how this community and the communities you're a part of touch your heart. How do they inspire you? And what can you give to engage back into the community? Let's know this together. Let's speak it together. Let's affirm it together. And let's move forward this week with a focus on this beauty of community. Together, I engage in the fullness of my spiritual community And I am blessed. And so it is. Bless you all.